All right, so we recording now. All right, I got my sister Jackie. Jackie Wade on with me tonight. I've been meaning to get you on to talk about uh, pretty much how we are in a place right now where, I mean, as we was experiencing before we even went on, the enemy trying to attack, a lot of people up under attack, a lot of people are going through a lot of stuff in this season. Um, and so out of everybody I know, you my go-to when it comes to uh, someone who always having a word of encouragement, always having a word of faith. So that's why I wanted to, to uh, get you on. You can be free my YouTube channel. And uh, I just want everybody else to hear this, the stuff that I hear all the time when I talk to you on the phone and stuff like that. Um, I want to take you back to a time where me and you was talking on the phone. I think we all was on a prayer car. You was on the phone with Moses Ministry. And you had just experienced the loss of your brother. And I have heard you say a lot of stuff over the years about, you know, just different stuff about how, you know, we all are bold until we go through some stuff. You know, we all are Christians until it really go down. Now, I actually seen you demonstrate that you know, with the loss of your brother. And I think we were all in prayer uh, that week. Me, my, well, me, Dustin, Irvin, we was all praying and stuff like that. And we had just found out, you know, that morning that your brother had uh, ended up passing away. And I just remember by the time I got off the phone with you, I was just so encouraged just because of the way that you had handled that. And I don't remember if you can remember everything that you had said that day, some stuff that I remember, if you forget, I'll, I'll bring it back up and let you know how that encouraged myself. Um, but can, I just want to take you back to that, that day. Not to say, and I don't want people to think that you was just, oh, well, I didn't care or anything like that. But I remember you was getting up for church. You was getting ready. You were still on the prayer call with us. Man, what was your thoughts? Like, what was going on in your mind at that point of time when you that day that you had found out because you encouraged me so what was on my mind was pretty much god is all i have so it's not like it was something that i mean i really didn't even have to think about it that's i mean that's just my go-to that's all i know is god i'm not saying that i'm holier than thou but I believe what I believe. I didn't just have faith, um, you know, at, at, you know, just out of the blue at that moment. This is something that has just been going on, you know, throughout the years. I have just continuously just relied on God to get me through whatever, because pretty much that's, all, that's the only answer I have is God. I'll so when I don't one, have strength, he's my strength. One thing that, one thing that I loved about that day uh, it was bad news, of course, to all of us, but I can look back in my own life. And I remember when I lost my mom, I mean, I was not, I was bitter at God, you know, for a long time, you know, and I remember something that you said that that really blessed me. And you was, you know, telling us that, you know, at the end of the day, because a lot of people are losing people right now, you know, their family members, their dads, their sisters, their brothers. And the things that you had said that blessed me is that you can't tell God what to do with his own creation. And you was uh, mentioning how God has done came through for you so many times, you know, 20, 30, 40 times. So how could you be mad at him for that one time that he didn't do something that you wanted him to do? But you said something else too. You was like, um, you never knew what your brother's, you know, prayers was, you know. And so, for you to just be in that place and then you went to church right after that, you didn't take a day off or nothing like that. You just started like, you know, praising God. What I want to know is, because what I'm going to be talking about on this video for the viewers is having a strong uh, foundation, you know, and that's kind of just coming from the word of God, what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 20, I think it's chapter 7, 24. He said, whoever hears these sayings of mine will be, uh, he was talking about like a uh, having a strong foundation or he said they'll be like a rock and when the wind came and when the floods came up against that house 
it stands strong, but it said, whoever don't listen to these sayings of mine, you know, when the wind and the storm comes, you know, that house is going to fall and that house is going to be great. And for people who just don't really, you know, read the Bible and stuff like that, what he pretty much saying, when you are in the word and when you are standing on him, when stuff happens, like what happened to you, you know, you're going to be standing on what God said, you know, and for people who don't, you know, when they go through trials and tribulations, you know, they do kind of like what I did because I went to drugs, I went to alcohol, I went to all that type of stuff. I was looking for a place of an escape. And so I really admired you because you wasn't just a person who just was talking to talk, you know, up until something happened. You was really walking there. You was really about this life. But how did you get to that place where um, you were just ready for a storm like that? Because not only, you know, did you stand strong on God when it happened, but you also preached at the funeral too, you know, and I know how that had to be hard. So how did you get to a place like that with God? Honestly, it's just through just trials and tribulations throughout life. Um, as a small girl, I mean, I gave my life to the Lord at the age of four. Um, I'm not saying that I didn't stray away from that. And when I say stray away from it, I don't mean that I quit, uh, that I gave up on God. I just, um, I just wasn't necessarily doing all the things that I should do, but it was instilled in me as a small child. You know, I was introduced to Jesus. And of course, I only understood, you know, so much at a young age. But because that was instilled in me at a young age, just throughout the years, it just, um, it just, my faith just got stronger and stronger just because of the situations that I've been through in life. Uh, some people go to alcohol, some people go to liquor, but I've just always made it a point to go to God, not because I was holier than thou, but God was my drug of choice. I like that. I and like it's not that. that I'm judging. I'm not judging people who, I'm not judging people who went to drugs. I'm not judging people who turned to alcohol because we all have a different story. And so I don't want to come across as being holier than thou because I'm not holier than thou. But that was just my drug of choice. Okay. Now, out of all the things that you done went through, one thing that we know about God, I was talking about this on the last video that I done, uh, that God will allow us to go through things. And I know I'm about to go, I'm going in a different uh, direction from what we talked about, but God will allow us to go through all kinds of stuff in our life just so he can prove himself to us. So he can show mm -hmm. us he is God and what he's capable of to do in our life. What is, out of all the things that you been through can you think of a time now where god really just showed up and showed out in your life honestly it's so many i probably it would be a hard time just just finding one thing oh uh, i mean it could be getting a job that i wasn't qualified for i mean i have so many testimonies of how god has you know just came through for me um that I, honestly i just can't really pick one Cause I have so many, I mean, be it um, just jobs. I mean, blessing me with a house at a young age, uh, good jobs, just showing me favor on different jobs. It's just been so many things. And I don't want it to be just about materialistic things. I mean, God has just been, he's just done so many things for me. Things that I did not deserve, not because I'm good. It's only because he's good. You know that he uh that he that he just gave me different opportunities that other people would not get i've been on jobs and not been there six months and they you know the vips asked me to you know travel with them mm -hmm. and those those are things that just don't happen for everybody you know on a regular basis right, so i mean right. as far as open up opening up doors of opportunity um just different things i mean from causing my enemies to bless me to, I mean, just a lot of things. I mean, just uh, providing, uh, giving me more than enough. Now I'm not rich by any means, but he has, you know, given me more than enough. Right. You know, I was with a friend not that long ago and he was telling me, we was talking about being rich and I can't remember if he called himself rich, but I think he, I think what he was saying that we are rich, you know, spiritually, 
just because we have things that really what the world is looking for. Because the world is really looking for an answer, you know, to the problems of this world, because material things don't really solve them at all. You know, and I think it was Paul, he was saying that we are poor, but yet we have everything. And he was talking about the fruits of the spirits, which is joy, which is peace, you know what I mean? Which is long suffering, because you can have all those things when it comes to like finances, material things and stuff like that. And then go through what you just went through not that long ago, you know, with your brother and just fall out and be ready to kill yourself. You know what I mean? Because what the world is looking for is that eternal peace. You know, when you are going through a trial, when, when you are going through a tribulation. And like I said, that's what one thing I like about you is you never really let the things of this world, you know, get to you. You really just believe God and took him at his word. So for, uh, for women or men, anybody who could be watching this and they want to know this, they want to know, OK, so they've been trying God because, you know, in the beginning, Faith is something like uh, a seed and you have to water it to grow. And in the beginning, for people who just now start walking with God or people who've been walking with God for a long time and they've been waiting on God and they've been doing everything right, but things are not changing and they're pressing and pressing and they just kind of feel like they're just getting worn out and tired. Because I feel like what the enemy is trying to do is destroy people's faith in this, this time that we're in. What would you say for a person like that? They could be watching this, you know, uh, who's just feeling like at this point they're about to give up. Or if it was just me, you know, talking to you, because every time I talk to you, you just give it to me straight. So you want to know what I would say to somebody who is believing God for some things and they feel like nothing has changed or God hasn't um, provided the things that they are believing him to? Yeah, for anybody who might be watching this who's in that situation. I would say that if God told them that they would do that, he would do something, that he would absolutely do it. Um, sometimes I think God doesn't release certain things to us because uh we're not mature enough to handle it. So just say, for example, if I ask for a mansion, but I can't keep uh my apartment clean, you know, we have to be able to maintain what is given to us obtaining sure. a thing obtaining a thing is not necessarily the hard part sometimes but it's maintaining something after we get it right. you wouldn't give uh you wouldn't give a kindergartner a convertible mustang why because it could cause them harm it could you know what i'm saying it could potentially kill them so sometimes i think god doesn't give us things not that he doesn't want us to have it it's just that we're not at a level of maturity to handle the things that we are asking him for. So that means I think we have to change our, uh, just the way we think, our mindset, and um, just different things, how we just have to process different things. Like I said, you could want a wife, but getting a wife probably may not be a hard thing, but it's maintaining the thing that you've asked for. Right. And if right. you're not mature in that area, then it could be more harm than good. And it could cause more damage. And so I think God didn't give us certain things just because we're not ready to handle it. And sometimes he wants to know our attitude while we're waiting. What are we doing while we're waiting? Are we angry? Are we bitter? Are we feeling like he lied to us? I mean, so just like uh, Abraham, Abraham waited on Isaac, but after he got Isaac, God asked him to sacrifice Isaac. But even though he had waited all those years for the promise that God had given him, he was still willing, he was still willing to sacrifice Abraham. God already had a ram in the bush, but bush, but sometimes he wants to know, you know, what our uh what's in our heart and if we if we really love him and if we're really sold out to him. Again, not holier than thou, but will uh really willing to give him that thing that we um hold. No, just it, we just hold it as you know as high it you know it has a value to us like an Does idol yep like an idol yeah and i heard you say before too though like when it comes to relationship wise that's just one thing but you had uh said that you know sometimes god knows that like you said we're not as uh, mature as we think, you know, yeah. and some relationships or some blessings could keep us away from God. 
And I and I think back to that. Me and uh, my pastor uh, Ray was talking at one point in time when I went to go visit him in Texas, and he was telling. I, I was actually telling him that in 2012, right before I got saved, one of the best things that happened to me is that God did not answer my prayers or neither did anybody in my family or my friends or anything like that helped me out. The reason why I say that is because before everything started to uh, go wrong in my life in 2012, I had just asked God, I was like, God, help me. You know, I need you to just change my life because I was living a life without fulfillment. And what he did was allow so many things just to go wrong in my life. I got arrested for something that I did two years before I ended up losing my job, my car broke down, I lost my apartment, I lost my furniture. And that was really the best thing that happened to me because that had me in a place where I had to be completely sold out for God because it was, I learned with <clears throat> going through that and having him not answer my prayers, I learned what it means to be in relationship. That had he give me what I wanted, I wouldn't have messed with him no more. You know, some blessings that we are praying for actually can keep us away from God. And you had said something else, too, that I didn't think about. You know, some some things kind of really reveal our heart. Like sometimes we are like you said, it's about our attitude while we're waiting on God. And sometimes we can be in a place of bitterness or we can be a place uh, of where we're just angry at God and stuff like that, because really we are after the blessing more than the uh, more than creator of the blessing. And um, I, I think when people are going through stuff like that, they're not really thinking about that, you know, because I'm th I'm just getting stuff. I'm getting revelation as I hear you speak. Um, but I, I guess if I just go on a different route with that, if it's somebody who's waiting for something like, you know, two different things I want you to think about and you can give it on however you flow. If a person is waiting for a healing to be manifested in their body, uh, for if it's something personal for them and it seems like they are doing the right thing. And another thing that um, something that people ask me to pray for often is a family member. We'll go there with the family member. Like what, 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 what do you do in a place when it's one thing to wait on something for God for yourself, but when you're believing God to change uh, someone else, what keeps you encouraged? What's your go-to? What's your advice for somebody that's just waiting on God and they just tired of the person, whether it be a husband, a brother, sister, children, whatever it may be. I would say that they need to find a scripture, find the word. What does the word say about the situation? Because sometimes we're asking for things that don't line up with the word of God. Now God will um, come through on what he, on his word. He stands behind his word. We can remind him of his promises. And then sometimes when we're looking at God, for God to change somebody else, sometimes we have to look at us and look at our motives because while we're asking God to change or work on somebody else, really the work needs to be done within us. Sometimes we have unresolved um, emotional issues, insecurities, and that filters over into our relationships. So I think we should um, just pray and seek God on the situation to see if it's something that needs to be um, worked out in us or if it is something truly going on with the, um, with the other person. And I think we just have to be led by the Holy Spirit um, to give us wisdom and knowledge concerning the situation. That's true. And that, you know what, that lets me, that gives me the understanding that a lot of times God will have us in jobs or he'll have us in certain relationships. And it's like you said, it's not even about the person, it's about us. God will use people to bring out the prayer warrior in us or bring out the love in us or even bring out deliverance in us. Because sometimes we have, I mean, I don't have children, so I can't speak on it, but I do know how kids can just get up under your skin. They can do stuff, you know, that make you bring out stuff in you that you didn't even know that you had. Or a right. spouse can do the same thing, you know, you might not even realize you got anger problems until you are with this person who you will look at it was them that brings that up out of you. But really it's God who's trying to get you delivered from your issue to be able to love people regardless, you know, because a lot of times people got to realize, especially as Christians, when you're in relationships with people, whether if it's a family member or mm -hmm. if, it's a, if it's a marriage or whatever it may be, people are looking at our response, you know, and, uh, 
that's something that I had to realize because I used to be a fighter. Uh, I just wasn't playing no games with nobody. And, I, and, I, and I'm and i still not all the way, uh, I'm walking out my deliverance. So sometimes people still got to be careful. But I realized God had put me on assignments and jobs and stuff like that. And I would be praying for the person who I felt like was coming up against me in some type of way. But really the whole point, not necessarily the whole point of me being there, but one of the things that God wanted me to learn is that there's a reason why that a person is affecting me like that. Because Jesus, I think you had said this, when Jesus was on the earth and he was dealing with the Pharisees, he would confront them, but they wouldn't agitate him. You know, they didn't keep him, you know, in a place of like frustration or anything like that. And so I realized when when I would get around people that would kind of irritate me and stuff like that, it's because God put me in that situation to change me, not to necessarily change them, because he was going to work on them when he worked on them. But in order for us to go higher in certain areas of our life, God will have us around those kind of people. Um, in closing, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to, to make this video is because the times that we're living in, you know, uh, it seemed like it's just getting worse and worse and worse. We're seeing all kinds of stuff, you know, that's really been going on for a long time, but the media is bringing it out to the surface. And uh, people are in a place of just, we're, they're really just desperate you know, for the truth, they're trying to find, uh, they're trying to find hope in different areas, you know, mm -hmm. of their life, whether it be um, fulfilling the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes or whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's just like everything with uh, in the world, as far as like the suicide rates, you know, I talked on one video about uh, the stuff that happened at Travis Scott concert. The enemy is really just attacking not just, you know, people in the world, but the saints too. What message would you give to them as far as like enduring to the end, you know, in the times that we're living in? Because even with yourself, I see as you going higher, the attacks is coming harder in, in your life and other people that we know life. Like, how do you just keep yourself together with all this craziness that's going on in the world? Because I have to really, just, again, just look, to God, because if we look at ground level and if we just look in the natural and the earth realm, it is a bunch of crazy stuff going on. So we have to set our vision to something higher than what's here. We have to look to God because what's going on in this world is just fulfilling prophecy. You understand? Right. So these things will uh, pass away. The Bible has spoken of uh, these things that will happen in the last days. So it's just fulfilling prophecy, but we got to look to him. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He can get us through all things. I mean, just, I mean, the, Satan is busy. I mean, he's, he's not going to slack up on what he's doing, but we need to get in the word, meditate on the word, eat the word, digest the word, and apply the word, and more importantly, believe the word. That's it right there. Look, and I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you, like, do you think, you know, like in my situation, we'll use me, when I went through what I was going through with my mom and then I turned away from my God, I mean, yeah, from God, and that happened a long time ago, but do you think to get to a place where we really believe, do you think that's really just all about relationship with God? Because before, the, one of the reasons why I was so messed up when all that happened in my life is because I was more about religion. I went to church, but there was no relationship. And then I looked at you and your life because I, I knew you before I even got saved. Do you think that that really, it's a responsibility what I'm saying to get to that level to endure. You think that that is built up about uh, what the responsibility of being in the word and applying the word. Would you say that? I would say uh, it's equivalent to having a relationship with somebody. Why did you trust your mother? And why did you um, why did you feel comfortable with your mother? It's because of the relationship. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. Because of the time you spent with her, the things that you saw her do for you, then you knew that she was for you and not against you. So you know if she told you something, that she was going to stand good on her promise. And it's true because at the end of the day, you really can't trust somebody that you really don't even know. And you know what's interesting to me? I was talking to somebody not that long ago, and uh, I don't know exactly what we was talking about that led to this, but there is some people, when I was talking about religion a second ago, 
they know the word. You know, they know every bit of, of what it says in Genesis to the Re Revelation, but they really don't know the author. And it makes me think about how, like, there are people who know me personally. I talk to them all the time. They've been knowing me for years. And there's other people. I can write a book, and you may know every word of what I said in that book, but that don't mean you know me. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's the same thing with God. Yes, we do have to know what his word says, but you have to know the author. You know, because when you know somebody, you trust somebody, there's no way that you would ever be able to trust anybody that you don't know. You know, I just now moved uh, to a different state and there's people that I met that they're cool. You know, I'm building a relationship, but it's, it would never be like somebody that I know that is that I'm related to that I've done spend time with, you know, because like I said, at the end of the day, you really can't trust nobody that you don't know. But outside of that, um, I've asked you the stuff that I said I was going to ask you and even a couple of other uh, questions that I wasn't, you know, really plan on asking you. Outside of that, is there any closing messages that you got that you feel like the God is putting on your heart now for anybody, man, woman, young person, especially young people, but just anything that, and it could be something that you feel like God has really just been speaking to you in this season about this season. Just anything. We in a season of storms. It to me, it's just like I don't watch the news, but you hear all of this crazy stuff going on, and it's storms. And the thing is, God never asked us to weather the storm by ourselves. We take on the responsibility because we feel like we got to have our hands in it. We have to do something. We have to to do something to uh to produce the outcome. And there is a responsibility, you know, for us to do. We are responsible for certain things like believe in the word, okay? We mm -hmm. got to believe the word. We can't just read it. We got to believe it. Faith without works is dead. But he never asked us to do it alone. It's like we are really supposed to be a passenger in the car, but we've taken over driving the vehicle. We've taken over driving the vehicle. He never asked us to do that. And I feel like we're wore out we're tired and we're frustrated because we're doing things that he did not tell us to do. He said he never leave us nor forsake us. So why do we feel like we're in this alone? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we feel like, oh, I just don't have the strength to walk. But I believe that when we don't have the strength to walk, God will carry us. So we're trying to figure out how do we get from here to there? Have you ever been in a situation in your life and you didn't know really how you were going to get through it, but you look back over your life and you overcame that? or you got through that 20 years ago. But we don't remember the steps of it because the, during those times, that's the time when God is carrying us. He's not leaving us. He was like, y'all not giving me credit. I'm carrying you. The only way you made it to this destination or to this corner, to this place is because of me. I was carrying you and you didn't have the strength to carry yourself. So we got to look to him. He's the answer. We can't talk about it. We got to be about it. We got to believe it. We believe what the weatherman says. You know, the weatherman says it's going to rain. We believe it's going to rain. We put our rain boots on. We take our umbrellas. Or I'm not going to wash my car today because the weatherman said it's going to rain. God said, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. Why do we have such a hard time believing that? And even with the disciples, he would always ask them. He would say, uh, oh, why are you fearful? Oh, you a little faith. You know, sometimes he would say, how much longer? I mean, he had to be getting somewhat frustrated with them. They had seen him perform miracles. They saw him heal the sick. They saw him cast demons out of people. And they wasn't just getting this information secondhand. They were right there with it. You know what I mean? They were with him when it was happening. Can you imagine how aggravated and frustrated and upset you would be if I was with you somewhere, I saw you do those things, or I, you know what I'm saying, I saw you just a deposit $10,000 into your bank. And then I act as if you won't give me $10 if you said you give me $10. At that point, and he kept teaching them. He was teaching them in parables, but it's like they just didn't get it. Even when they were on the boat, he told them he was going to take them to the other side. And when he tells you he's going to take you somewhere, he is going to absolutely take you. He said, let's go to the other side. So that means that he was planning on taking them to the other side. It's no way you have God with you and you don't meet, you don't meet, you, you don't reach your destination. You get what I'm saying? 
He had already made provision. He already knew that it was going to be a storm. That storm didn't take him by surprise. It says he was in the back of the boat sleep. It says he was laying on the pillow sleep. But then he was on the boat with them. But obviously they didn't know who he was. They knew his name, but they couldn't have known who he was because if they knew who he was, guess what they would have did? They would have got their pillows and went to sleep too. But they didn't do that. And then after he gets up, they's like, oh, are you not concerned about us? You know, we about to die. Are you not concerned? So he gets up. Oh, he, re he rebukes the, sto the, the storm and the rain. Peace, he says, peace be still. That stops the storm. And then he tells them, oh, ye a little faith. And then the disciples are still confused about who he is. So they knew him, but they didn't know him. Because what they said was, oh, who is this man? What manner of man is this that even the, the wind and the rain obey? So you got people that know you, but they don't know you. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. You don't woke up. Hey, that's uh, everything that you said. Look, you over here ministering to me. And you said so much. But one thing I want everybody to know, that what you said to just back you up on that. You are not in this thing by yourself. No matter how hard it get, no matter how lonely it get, no matter how much the devil tries to destroy your faith, making you think that things are not going to work out, making you think that God is not going to come through for you. We are not in this fight by ourselves. No, not at all. So look, hey, I'll end it with that. I'm going to have to go back and watch this myself because you was just, you was really ministering tonight. Ministering tonight, I want to uh, thank you for your time because you could have been doing anything else outside of being on here with me. Uh, we definitely gonna do this again. We're gonna flip it, you know, the next time. Uh, I think you said you wanted to ask me some questions about, you know, different uh, situations in my life. So uh, I'm gonna close this out. You shut it, you already shut it down. Uh, as I always say, y'all, whatever you're going through in your life, uh, it's only temporary because God will always bring you out. He said, who the son has set free is free indeed. I love y'all. I'm out. We're going to catch y'all again. And Jackie, I will, I'm going to call you whenever this is over with. Okay. All right.